chilling tales for dark nights. I don't know where to start, where to begin about my feelings of this thing. This story is one that I've had to keep in secret, in fear that my friends or family may persecute me and send me to a mental facility. What I've seen, what I have heard has been shot down by many just simple lies. This story will hopefully open the eyes to some who don't believe in my words of it. And what it is. Let me start off on a new note. The first time I encountered it was the late summer 2008. My family's house had been foreclosed since we just could not afford to pay it off anymore due to all the land we owned. We bought a smaller house in a nice neighborhood that was just two miles away from the one pier. I guess we just liked that area. It was well for a while and I settled into a new home quite alright. It felt like a home. It felt nice and pleasant even when it rained. You felt safe. Secure. Then one day, after we got settled in, I decided to go for a walk on the nearby trail. No one else was there, not even as I looked as far in front of me, and as I turned around, not even a single person. It seemed to be odd. It was a nice day out, so why am I the only one who gets to enjoy this day on the sidewalk? Whatever. I guess I shouldn't be complaining about having this trail to my lonesome self. I continued to trek, and I peered to both sides of the trail. To my left, a rather small but steep hill that led to more houses. And to my right, just a thin wood teeming with green trees and dirt. This woods ran across the trail the entire way. Being my boy self, I jumped into this nest of foliage, hoping to find some adventure. I looked around and examined everything I saw. I picked up a stick and began swinging it like a sword. I continued inside the small, narrow woods to find something that mildly disturbed me. A small rabbit, about the size of a large man's shoe, lay dead across the leafy earth floor. I dropped a stick and knelt down on one knee to examine it further. Its stomach had been torn down the middle, with entrails barely seeping out. Something more odd was that there seemed to be no bite marks or scratches, as if it just seemed to die. Then a weird feeling in the back of my head entered. A tingling feeling. It didn't hurt, but it was very irritating. It made me want to just hit my head against a tree to make it stop. But even as a child, I knew that was foolish. I didn't really feel any more adventure in me after that rabbit, so I trekked back and ate supper without informing my family of the rabbit. The next morning, I woke up to hear talking downstairs. My mom and my sister were talking about something on the deck. I woke up and looked to my mom, who had a disgusted look on her face. Uh, what's going on? I asked in a worried tone. I think an animal left some of his lunch on our porch. I looked out to see that under our porch swing was a pile of animal entrails. I whispered to myself, The rabbit. My mom cleaned it off and then threw them away. Nothing more happened during that day, it went on as all days go on, but that night I had a dream, or at least I thought it was a dream. It started out with me, in the woods. I was lying down at the same spot where I found a rabbit. I was cold, I was naked, and I didn't have a clue what was happening. I couldn't move, but I saw in the distance a shadowy figure that seemed to be constructed of the darkness. It seemed to be almost seven feet tall had a deer-like shape for a head, horns curled at its shoulders and back. He walked like a man, by hooves, or what seemed to be hooves, I don't know! He walked towards me, creeping past the trees, a once dark forest had been made even darker as a cloud of misty fog followed its trail. It spoke in a demonic, monotone voice. You think you are of higher importance than a rabbit, that you are greater. I couldn't respond. I was shocked by everything that was happening. He spoke once more. The earth will die and all will cry. Bring the tears of the unfaithful, the untrained. 
untrustworthy, and the cynical men and women unto me. They won't know me by an image, but by their undying fate. Maybe they should have listened to the crazy man on the street. Maybe they should have listened to the one that tried to convince him that it was no myth, or what they saw was indeed true, flesh and fact. You know, my son, that little thing that just catches your curious eye. That little unnatural feeling that makes you feel out of place. That something's wrong. That physical feeling when you feel something touch you, but you debunk it as just your mind. That is me, the Midnight Man. <laughs> he knelt to my level, and with a soft yet noticeable touch, he prodded my stomach with a pointed, sharp claw. He arose and walked away. I appeared at my naked body. My stomach turned into a shadowy black, and it traveled through my bare body. Just then, I awakened in my bed, sweating through my sheets. I glanced down to my pillow to see it was covered in blood. I touched my face and it was dripping from my nose. Since the day these events occurred, I have been seeing more things, and my self-being has been changed. My grades in school have dropped, and I began to slack off and focus on the world out of school. The woods. My house. The Midnight Man. Though I haven't seen or heard of him since, I can feel his presence within me. I don't know if he's evil or good. I do know that I know more about life and myself being after my encounter with him. I still suffer from the tingling feeling in my head, and I always think about what he said since that day. I believe that this man can enter anyone's thoughts and, well, being and break them down until you change them entirely. This thing is dangerous to anyone, and whatever it, he, this thing is, <laughs> it must be stopped.